Hey folks, my name is Chris Wessel. Today we're going to be tying a pattern called the Magog Smelt. This pattern was originally created in New England for landlocked salmon, but has definitely found a place in a lot of Atlantic salmon anglers' fly boxes. And not only just for salmon, it works for a multitude of species. So without further ado, let's get on into it. All right, today we're going to be using a number two uh, CS42 bomber hook for this. Nice little streamer hook for these flies. And we're going to start off with a UTC70 in black. Doesn't really matter what you start off with on this, just, you know, you can use white or whatever, just as long as it's finished off with black. So we're just going to bring our thread down the shank to roughly the bend of the hook. This pattern calls for a teal flank uh, tail. Today anywhere where it calls for teal flank we're going to be using mallard just because that is what I have. So uh, just pick a little bunch of feathers out and I'll tie those in. And actually I like the tail to be just a little longer on this so I can pull that out. That's perfect. And we're also going to tie in our ribbing right now. And I want that ribbing to go almost all the way down the shank. And I'm not too concerned about really tying this stuff in, uh, covering it up, because this is going to be covered over with two different materials. So, that being said, I just want to go back over that. I'll probably pay for that in the end result, actually. It's going to be a little bit uneven. That's all right. Let's get this done. Alright, so I'm just going to tuck that oval away. I'm using a size medium there. And what I'm going to do is tie this uh, thread off and I'm going to cut it because um, I have all my body materials on uh, bobbins already. So, And that just speeds up this process for me a little bit. The next uh, thing we're going to use is uh, a uni underbody. And this stuff is kind of nice. It just uh, fills in some of the bumps in the body and uh, basically basically leaves a really nice surface to lay down some mylar on. So we're just going to bring that up. And you may have to give that a little spin as it twists up a little bit when it's on that bobbin. And the body is obviously not even because I did not take my time with laying that flank down. So don't do that. So I'm just going to tie that uh, underbody in and cut it off. And make sure it's secure. And we're actually going to cut that thread again because we're going to lay some mylar down on top of this. Silver mylar. Believe it or not, this does save me time, I promise. So right before we do that, I like to lay down some head cement along the body of this and basically that just really secures that mylar. And uh, you know, it, it's an extra level of security for a good fish bite on it. And we're pulling pretty good as we go here just because it uh, the mylar will form to the body a little bit better as, if you're pulling. It stretches a little bit. And we're going to come back out now. And that will fill up any of the spots that we kind of left gaps in on our way down. Alright, 
thread back on. <clears throat> Now we have her uneven body. I apologize. We're gonna wrap our ribs, and uh, not too worried about rib counts on this, like I would be with a uh, smaller Atlantic salmon wet fly. I just kind of space mode how I want them spaced out, and then I, uh, however many end up being on it, is fine with me. I also find it hard to tie like this for this pattern because usually I would have it tipped like this and I can see everything going on on the side but uh, I want you guys to be able to see it so next part in this is our throat and we're going to use a little bit of hen saddle for that today and it's going to be a red so I'm just picking out a piece that I want and I'll just that's about the size I want there. I'll just double check that. Yeah, that's that's good length. All right, now we're gonna start working on our wing. Uh, first is our white bucktail layer, and we tend to choose that from near the top of the bucktail and that uh, that's usually the thinner less hollow stuff and what that equates to on the wing of this fly is less flaring your wing will lay a little bit flatter so uh, I'm not going to make a total paintbrush end on this but I do like to kind of hand stack it and sometimes I'll throw it in the stacker just to clean it up a bit and I might do that with this so I'm just putting it in the stacker. I'm just going to give it a few taps. Oh, geez. All right. Didn't want to stay in there. Yeah, that'll be nice. So I just want to kind of size this for a little bit of past my tail, and that's how I like to tie them. And I'll worry about trimming this afterwards. I uh, there's lots of room to work here, so all right. That is our first material. Our second is going to be yellow bucktail, and you don't want to tie in a crazy amount of each one of these uh, materials because I'm going to tell you what your wing will get crowded really quick. <coughs> Excuse me. But after you tie one or two, you uh, you pick up exactly what you're looking for for uh, proportions. I'm gonna give that a little bit of a tap. And you want to measure that up to your last piece. And you want to make sure that that uh, bucktail is staying on top of your last layer. I could actually use a couple more strands, I think. And I'm going to just grab them now. Alright. I think we can do a fuller version of that color. I'm just going to give that another little tap there. You can hand stack those too, and that works really well with bucktail. Alright, that should uh, be how much we need. Yeah, that looks good. So, the next uh, material that calls in this pattern is um, purple bucktail, but 
today we are going to use a different material. We're still going to use purple, but uh, we're going to add a little flash to this um, to this fly, and we're going to use a product called uh, Fish Scale by Just Add H Two O. Uh, this pro, uh, geez, this synthetic material has a really really nice uh, shine to it, and it has a few strands of um, uh, micro crystal flash mixed in with it and it just makes for a super cool uh, wing material and something a little bit different see what I mean? yeah I like that a lot alright Clean that up just a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. So now we got to put uh, what they call cheeks on this, and that also calls for teal flank, which I uh, do not have any of, which I already mentioned. So I'm just using mallard flank again, and basically uh, you're going to be just be using the tip of this feather, and you kind of make what you want out of it. That's roughly what I want. That's going to be laying in there like that. So uh, I do need to tip this up unfortunately to see what I'm doing here. Um, I just lay, lay it down where I want it and put my finger on it and then I give it a few ties to put it in and that, that's what it's going to look like. I'm going to just secure that a little bit better. And while we're on that side, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, this also calls for some jungle cock. So um, I don't have real jungle cock because I just don't use it enough to justify that purchase. But I got this uh, synthetic stuff, which in my opinion is not as nice as real jungle cock. But I, uh, you know, for the amount that I use it, it it's fine. And it's super easy to work with too. So that will be that side. And we're basically just going to do the same on uh, the other side of the fly. So I'll tip that over that way. Going to create another cheek with uh, mallard flank. This pattern is um, really, really good for landlocked salmon, which is what it was actually created for. But uh, it's an overlooked fly for fresh Atlantic salmon, and uh, I haven't had a lot of success with it in when I've used it because I've used it in the fall, which is not typ typically a real successful time for me anyway. But uh, you know, it, it's an imitation of a smelt fly, and um, and I just realized I forgot to put the last part of the wing on this, but I'm still going to do that. So, so what we're all about here is making mistakes and coming back from them. <laughs> so I'll finish this off the same way we did the first side. Oh, how many of you are just sitting there like, oh, he totally forgot the peacock curl in the wing. All right. So we got uh, on both sides, we have everything set up and now we just have to add our uh, peacock curl. So I like taking two, uh, two fibers of peacock curl and just kind of looking at them. You don't want anything that's really bent up and ugly looking. I mean, to be honest, the way I see peacock curl is it's, it, you know, it, it looks all right on a fly, but, uh, when you smash into a fish, this is going to be the first thing to go. So, really, who cares? So I just take those uh, two uh, feathers and or two strands, I should say, and I put them on top, and that's what I meant to do. So, <laughs> no mistakes. I like to fold these over too. Again, I, it doesn't matter. This stuff breaks. It's so brittle. It doesn't matter. It's going to come off regardless all right 
Now, before we finish our head, I do like to put some uh, watery, uh, you notice I usually use like a crazy glue, but now I like to use a little bit of watery head cement for this because there's so many layers up there, you really want it to kind of penetrate through all those layers. And that'll just keep everything uh, in place and won't keep it, or keep it from coming out. And we're just gonna fill our head in now a little bit. And I think that we have a finished product here. I'm gonna tie off. And we'll finish the head off with a bit of head cement. I don't know. I don't think it looks like a smelt at all, but uh, it is called a smelt pattern. And you know what? It really does work. So this is one of those multi-species patterns, brook trout, landlocked salmon, brown trout, any salmonid really. So that's it, folks. That is a Magog smelt. Uh, thank you very much for stopping by and watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would really appreciate it if you did. If uh, that's not your thing, that's totally cool too. We're just happy to have you. So until next time, have a great day.